It is a matter of historical record that witch hunt hysteria was a scourge across early modern Europe and the colonies in the New World that stretched across three centuries. During this period, sometimes called the Burning Times, an unknown number of people, mostly women, were denounced as witches and heretics. They were horrifically tortured into producing false confessions, often made to name others in their community that they consort with in witches' sabbaths, and often executed by hanging or strangulation, and more famously, being burnt at the stake. Following the Bible's decree of thou shalt not suffer a witch to live literally, churches and local magistrates sought out and prosecuted tens of thousands of people for witchcraft. During this barbaric period, the devil was a very real and ominous presence. It was believed that witches were the devil's recruits and servants on earth, wreaking all manner of havoc, everything from death, disease, and the failure of crops, to miscarriages, nightmares, and even impotence. Whatever went wrong within a village or community, it could certainly be blamed on evil sorcery. In 1487, the Catholic Inquisitor Heinrich Kramer further exasperated the witch hysteria by composing the Malleus Maleficiarum, Latin for the witch's hammer. This laid the framework for the detection of witches, the methods of retrieving confessions, and how to conduct a witch trial. Trials had to present proofs that an accused person was a witch, including blasphemy, being associated or related to other witches, having what was called a witch's mark, which could be any skin blemish that was supposedly placed upon a witch's body by the devil, and of course, confessions under interrogation. Interrogations almost always included some means of torture, and during the medieval period, human beings showed their morbid ingenuity with the inventions of machines that inflicted the most unspeakable methods of torture, that included branding with red-hot pokers or spikes, mutilations, and the breaking of bones. The horror of the witch hunts didn't begin to die down until the mid-17th century, and it wasn't until the late 18th century that nearly all of Europe ceased considering witchcraft a criminal offense. The awful business of witch hunts have been, for the last two and a half centuries, nothing more than an appalling element of the medieval age. Most people of this age would never believe that such a thing could happen today. Now you are talking about witches, and witches leaving their body. I can show you and teach you many places in the Bible. This is Helen Ucpabio. Calling herself Lady Apostle, she heads the Liberty Foundation Gospel Ministries in Nigeria, and she believes that she can save her country from witchcraft. But instead of denouncing other women as witches, she preaches that the devil now targets children as recruits. Unfortunately, she's not just some random lunatic with a twisted imagination. Helen and her church are largely responsible for the recent wave of witch hysteria that has broken out all across West Africa, which has resulted in thousands of children to be starved, beaten, brutalized, tortured, abandoned, and even murdered by followers of her insane beliefs that witch children ruin the lives of not just their families, but of whole villages. She produces and distributes ridiculous movies that have played a very significant role in whipping up this hysteria. The most well-known is End of the Wicked, which specifically and graphically details how witch children steal the souls of other children and initiate them into witchcraft. These productions, along with the dumbing down of the destitute and uneducated masses who flock her church of over 150 branches, have made her one of the wealthiest preachers in the Niger Delta. And now, she's coming to the United States. In May 2012, the self-proclaimed Lady Apostle will be hosting a series of sermons called 12 Days of Battling in the Spirit of Freedom at the Liberty Gospel Church in Houston. The original date was for mid-March, but according to Pastor Godwin Umatong, who heads her Houston branch, the event has been moved back to make time for extra preparations. Curiously, I was unable to find an address or contact information anywhere on the internet that states where exactly the Liberty Gospel Church is located, which leads me to suspect that it's not an established church at all. Perhaps it will be some clandestine meeting that only a few will be allowed to attend. Who knows? However, Helen Ucpabio has visited Houston before, back in May 2010, during which she preached at the Glorious Praise Ministries, which is headed by Nigerian pastor Jonathan David. Maybe this is where the Liberty Gospel Church will be set up. To get a clearer view of what we're dealing with, one need only to read a few passages from her book, Unveiling the Mysteries of Witchcraft, 
which includes her explanations of how to acquire and detect witchcraft in children, including infants, stating, quote, If a child under the age of two screams in the night, cries, and is always feverish with deteriorating health, he or she is a servant of Satan. And according to her films of stellar production value, other telltale signs of witchcraft include having little interest in school, being temperamental, and talking back to one's parents. Mercy! Yes, my lord. From today, your spiritual name is mistake. I invoke upon you the spirit of stubbornness, stealing, lack of interest in school, waywardness, unsteadiness, bad company, and power of destruction. Blow up all electronics in your home. Break plates, glasses, and then cause fever and failure to all other children in your home. Understand? Yes, my love. Her films detail how those initiated as witches are cannibals and can even shapeshift into animals. This may all seem pretty silly and even unintentionally funny to people in the West. But the belief in witchcraft has become a serious problem in many West African nations, especially since so many who are accused are small children. This hysteria is fueled by fervent, unshakable beliefs in evil sorcery that is pushed upon the ignorant and uneducated by the many hundreds of Pentecostal churches found all across Nigeria. As was the case during the medieval witch hunts, the devil is a very real danger and exists everywhere for these people who are rife with superstition. And witchcraft is blamed for any misfortune. Sickness, unemployment, miscarriage, deaths in the family, even nightmares are considered signs of sorcery and the blame often gets put on those most vulnerable. Children, often so young they can't yet properly verbalize what their families have done to them. So the mother is dead, what's up the father? Okay. The dad is there in the village. Okay. In the neighboring village. Why did she end up living here like she is now? Yes, and she said she was pushed out of the house. Okay. So do you, do you believe that you are a witch? Do you believe that you are a witch? I want you to know, Mary, that we don't believe that you are a witch. What we believe is that you are a beautiful, fine, fine girl. Since the 2008 broadcast of the documentary Saving Africa's Witch Children on the UK's Channel 4 and the 2009 follow-up Return to Africa's Witch Children, both having detailed the problem of witch hysteria and exposing Helen Ukpavio and her church's roles in the horror, Nigeria has since made the practice of denouncing children as witches illegal. In response to this, Helen Ukpavio ordered her followers to crash the Nigerian Humanist Movement National Conference, which was designed to target child abuse at the hands of witch hunters. The Channel 4 documentaries also highlighted the UK charity Stepping Stones Nigeria, which was established to help the alarming number of children who have been made victims of the witch hunts and work to set up safe housing for displaced children, provide them with food, schooling, and sometimes try to convince their families and villages that not only are they not witches, but to allow them back into their homes. Helen Ukpavio filed a police complaint against the local directors of Stepping Stones Nigeria, accusing them, with unbelievable irony, of fraud. She filed suit that the directors had sought to hire assassins to kill her and tried to have their children's shelter shut down. She also demanded eight million pounds in damages for what she calls a violation of her constitutional rights of religious beliefs. I don't know, you, I've, have you I've seen, seen it? You've seen it where? On sides of roads. On when the sides of roads? When you drive through Aqua Bomb State, there are children on the sides Why are you road? talking about Aqua Bomb State and I'm in Cross River State? No, but I, you were asking me where I've seen it. No, you saw children abandoned. You, no, look, don't, don't be careful. Mind your threat. words. Excuse me, mind your words. As you drove and passed, you saw children in Akwai Bomstead abandoned. Whenever she is confronted about the thousands of children who have been abandoned, horribly abused, and even murdered over accusations of witchcraft that she and her church have fueled, 
She denies that her message and her films encourage child abuse, and have accused any Westerners who question her preaching and motives as being spiritually ignorant and racist. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We have about 150 churches in Nigeria. I am a voice in this country. So a white man or a white woman cannot come into my country and say nonsense against me and mess up the whole situation and present crooked things somewhere, something from a topic, a team he or she doesn't even know. And you have not, you watch every of my films, you've not seen a film on child abuse. You are, you, no, you, 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 you can never see now because that's not the area of your interest. She blathers on about how she is targeted because she's an African. And if J.K. Rowling can write stories and make movies about children engaging in witchcraft, why can't she? What does she mean? What of Harry Potter? Is Harry Potter, is it not doing um, dubious, you know, very dangerous things about children? Do you go to ask her? Is it because he's Africa? Maybe because J.K. Rowling doesn't tell millions of her readers that Hogwarts is real, or encourage anyone to use her books and films as guides to denouncing real children as witches. Needless to say, her upcoming visit to the United States has sparked outrage at the thought of a child witch hunter preaching in America. Again, Stacy Gonzalez of the Houston Atheists managed the Facebook community Stand Against Helen Ukpavio and is planning on organizing a protest to Ukpavio's visit, when an actual date is set for her arrival to the U.S. Stacy is also currently running a fundraiser to donate to the Stepping Stones Nigeria. If and when any new information is released, I'll be sure to include that in a future video. There is also an open petition on change.org addressed to President Obama to deny Ukpavio entrance into the United States. Personally, I think this isn't enough, and that she should be brought up on charges of crimes against humanity for all the human suffering she has caused with her efforts of spreading delusion and hysteria. This woman is no apostle. To proliferate a medieval belief in witchcraft to impoverished, uneducated people and have them turn against their own children is a type of evil that shocks even those of us here in the United States who have our own crop of homegrown religious nuts. Nigerians have nothing to fear from the supernatural, nonsensical beliefs of old. The only evil anyone in the Niger Delta needs to fear is this woman.